Hey YouTube, it's Christian back here again with a little follow-up review of the Gigabytes GBBX A8 5557. <gasps> Woo, had to take a big deep breath there that I unboxed about a month ago. Uh, it's a little follow-up review that I meant to do a lot sooner than I did, but I do now have this thing put together. I've got Windows 10 Pro 64 bit installed on it, 8 gigs of DDR3 memory, a uh, little PNY 120 gig SSD, uh, and I thought I'd go over a few things. I wanted to go over power consumption, uh, take a look at temperatures, uh, take a look at noise. It was one of the things on this particular system that had some negative reviews is that people had said that if you've been playing games on it for a little bit or if you had been streaming something that the thing would crank up and it sounded horrific it was loud I have I haven't really gotten it to do that and I've been using this thing for a month now and it's maybe cranked up a couple of times but it's very sporadic and it's hard to catch it's on for about it cranks up for maybe 10 seconds and then it just winds straight back down and then you don't hear it again you don't hear it crank up like that again for days in some cases. Uh, so it's very sporadic. I'm going to get into the BIOS, see if maybe I can just crank it up. I don't know if there's any settings in the BIOS like that. I don't know how extensive the BIOS is as far as its customization and what you can do. But I'm going to see if I can crank it up just so you guys can hear that noise that everybody complains about. Um, I'm going to show you guys my Cinebench scores. I'm going to play a couple games on here and then maybe take a look at Cody. And you guys can see how that flows on this particular system which was my main reason for getting it um, you know I bought this particular system to replace an older home theater PC that I had built about three or four years ago I was looking for something smaller quieter and something that was more power efficient than the system that I currently have one of the things I noticed uh, right away when I got this system all put together and got Windows installed is that the system does advertise four gigs or not four gigs sorry that'd be nice four megs of level two cache so you're talking one meg per core give or take um, so and that's advertised fine in CPU-Z it shows uh, two basically uh, so it's shared I mean you get two megabytes um, shared cache over two cores um, and it shows that fine in CPU-Z. The one thing I thought was weird is that in Windows, under Task Manager, uh, it shows 8 megabytes. Now, I have the latest version of the BIOS on here. I made sure to do that straight up because people were saying that temperatures weren't showing correctly. Um, and so I, that was the first thing that I did. So I'm not really sure why it's doing that. That'd be freaking awesome if it did have 8 megs of level 2 cache. I doubt it. I'm pretty sure it's as advertised as the 4 megs of level 2 cache. Uh, that being said, since I did update the BIOS, I'm still getting some really funky readings as far as the temperatures for the, the CPU or the APU. Uh, if you look right here, right now, it's showing at idle 128 degrees Celsius or 260 degrees Fahrenheit, which is ridiculous. I think that we're probably talking about probably this temperature right here on this TP. TMP0, uh, the 67 degrees at idle. That that to me seems more realistic. I got my IR um, thermostat out, just just checking the temperatures of the exhaust, and I'm I'm guessing from what I was seeing coming out of the exhaust, you know, it was right around the 55 to 60 degrees. So I'm gonna say that this is probably accurate. Um, one thing you'll notice when I go to put on a game and this cranks up here, this is monitoring some temperature. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's accurate, but it's going to crank up to like 160, 180 degrees Celsius, which to be honest with you, I think that's just a house fire. So I, there's, there's no way that that's accurate. Um, taking a look, if we go down here and take a look at Cinebench, um, I'm not going to, well, I actually ran it earlier here while I was screencasting everything got a score of 129 when when I wasn't running anything else I was able to get a score of 183 which I thought was pretty respectable considering that the uh, uh, considering what you're talking about it, it's it's a four core mobile CPU that you're probably going to so find in laptops um, if you take a look here uh, scores in the similar range you're talking uh, 182, you got an i5-2410M, so it's another mobile processor. Uh, 183, you got an i5-3470, which is uh, uh, just, a, I think, a standard desktop quad-core. 
Um, going further down here, what else did I see that really... Oh, here, right here. So we got this AMD X6 1090T. That's like the old... I, I had that processor probably four or five years ago. I love that processor. I never did run Cinebench on it, but uh, score of 189. So you're talking uh, this particular quad-core processor uh, can hold its own against uh, various i5s, older six core processors I don't know how accurate any of these are to be honest with you don't know if this guy here with this X6 uh, 1090T was running YouTube five games and a bunch of other junk probably Bitcoin mining or something while he ran that because I feel like that score should be higher but I could be wrong but uh, all in all I thought that was pretty impressive for this particular CPU uh, moving on uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do next is I'm going to load up a couple games. Uh, so let's let's do that. I'll see you guys in game. Okay, guys. First game up here is Team Fortress 2. Okay, and so I I apologize. I did get a request to play a couple of Blizzard games, Heroes of the Storm, and Wow. And to be honest with you, I don't. I don't have time right now to do those. Will I do those later? Possibly. These games are already in my Steam library, the games that I'm going to go over with you guys today. And hopefully they give give you some idea of what the system's capable of. Now, um, let's get out of this. Now, as far as everything's concerned, this particular game automatically uh, set everything to high. See if I can find some action here. Um, and right now, let's see if I can get some action. See what I can get if I can get those frame rates to drop. So right now, it looks like I'm looking at anything between 27 and 40 frames per second, um, which is not bad. I know this is not the newest game. I know it's not Bleeding Edge or anything like that. Um, but a lot of people play it. It's a, it's a cool game. You can play with a, a controller. You can sit on your sofa. Um, you see some dips down there close to 20. I would assume, and I got killed, I'd assume that if you drop this down to medium settings, that you would get uh, some pretty good frame rates. Um, let's see if I can get into some action here. Mm-hmm. See if we can get some action here and see what our frame rates are consistently. I'm sitting on the sofa with a controller. I think all in all I'd be happy with this. I think if I was gonna play this on a consistent basis, I'd probably drop this to medium and see what kind of frame rates I could get. See if I could get some more consistency. Because it does, you can see on the screen it is jumping and lagging a little bit. Um Especially a game like this is pretty fast paced. You, you're not going to want jumping and lagging like this. Let's see if I can kill somebody. Oh, come on you. Got him. Well, looks like night about 18, 19 is the lowest it's gonna drop. That gives you an idea there. So we're we're talking. If I dropped it down to medium, I could probably stay in the 40s, which would be playable for me. I'm not I'm not super picky. So let's move on to our next game. Okay, guys, next game up is Lord of the Rings Online. And again, this is not a game that this is a game that's been out for a while, but it's a game that I love to play. It's a 
a game that I would say overall is a very pretty game. Um, probably not the most hardware demanding game, but to be honest with you, I don't think most MMOs are. Even if you're playing something that's fairly new and modern, I think most MMOs you could bump the settings down to medium, or in this case, this particular one, uh, the game automatically detected my hardware and it set everything at very high. So I could probably bump this down, see am I getting dips down to 16 frames, I could probably dump this, bump this down to high or medium and get, and it could be very playable. To be honest with you right now, I've, I've got no problem with the little bit of lag here and there that I'm seeing. Unless you're in a dungeon or something, if you're just out grinding or running quests, I don't really think that you're gonna you're gonna need a ton of frames. It is dipping pretty low. It, it's kind of annoying me a little bit, so I, I guess I probably would uh, drop this down to higher medium, just just to make the fluidity of the game more consistent. But again, I I didn't. You're not gonna buy this. Game, you're not going to buy this computer to be some type of gaming rig. It's just not going to happen. I think my main point with showing you a couple games is that if you bought this system to sit inside of your, you know, sit on your home theater shelf, that it could play some games, um, uh, it, and it could play them okay. And again, I apologize, these aren't the games that were really requested, but hopefully it gives you guys an idea of what is possible with this little system as far as playing games. Let's kill another bear. Let's kill him with some ground cracking stuff. Some lightning. You be dead. Okay, so there it's cranked up, guys. Just I had to quickly get up and catch it because you can hear it. It's going to start to wind down, and it winds down very quickly. I kind of let it do its thing here. You can hear it. It's kind of winding down. And that's what it does, like I was saying earlier, is it, you have to catch it because it doesn't do it very often, but it will wind up to what sounds like full blast on the fans. And within a minute or so, it just does that whole thing where it just winds down and it gets a lot closer to where it was just, you know, at, at idle. It's, to me, it's no big deal. I mean, it. It happens when, it, it, doesn't, it hasn't happened while I'm watching Cody, it doesn't happen when I'm streaming videos on YouTube, it happens if I'm playing a game or something like that. Um, so, I, you know, normally have my headphones on anyways when I'm doing that, so to me it's not a huge deal. And you can see it's almost, it's still a little bit wound up, not much, because normally when it's at idle, I mean it's dead silent, so hope that gives you guys an idea. Hopefully that comes through somewhat accurately over the camera. Okay guys, so in conclusion, this is what this system's for. It's a fantastic little home theater PC. Uh, it plays Kodi perfectly. It streams everything that we stream at home perfectly, whether it's Amazon Prime, YouTube. We we are subscribers of Sling.TV, even though it sucks. So it does all that stuff great. Uh, I've never had any issues with it in Kodi. Uh, smooth. Um, high definition videos are smooth and that's what it's for you know it actually it actually be a great little NAS too little home NAS um, it's got USB 3.0 so slap on a couple of uh, external USB 3.0 devices and the next thing you know you got plenty of storage for all of your media and it's streaming out to you know everything on your home network um, uh, it's cheap 
it doesn't suck up a lot of power as you guys have seen you know 10 to 10 to 20 watts at idle uh, 50 to 60 watts at load while you're playing a game uh, you know when when you're doing stuff like Cody um, you know it's 25 30 watts at the most so it's a system you can leave on all the time you're not concerned about it sucking up a bunch of power uh, so you know it's it's cheap it's quiet and it doesn't suck up a bunch of power I mean for the price whether it's 139 or 179 it, I think I give it two thumbs up I mean you gotta if you're in the market to get a cheap little home theater PC then uh, I think this is the way to go if you're in the market for something that can play a game every once in a while I think this is the way to go it, it'd actually probably be a great little computer if you wanted to use a streaming service whether it was Steam or whatever you know and you wanted to stream your your games at a nice F, you know frames per second from your your gaming computer while you're sitting on the sofa you know with a controller um, so that's my thoughts. If if I missed anything, let me know. I I apologize. I didn't get to do any of the the Blizzard games. I, I'll try to do that if if time allows. Um, but if anybody's got anything else that they want me to do with the system, want me to post a video of or pictures or or just have a question on it, let me know. And again, I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. I'm gonna try to doing some more videos here in the future. I kind of dropped off for a few years and wasn't doing anything, so uh, I'm gonna try to do some more videos. So keep watching. Make sure you subscribe. Give me a big thumbs up. Thanks, guys.